I'm Dave Kassler, and hello, Augies. Good to talk to you again. Uh, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, bringing to you Ask Dave, episode 119. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some test equipment I have here at the station. Uh, the purpose of the test equipment is to visualize what's going on in the system. Um, so I have a few that I'm going to show you, a multimeter, a bench power supply, and an oscilloscope, and a signal generator. So with my wife as the camera woman, let's go. There are four pieces of test equipment I want to show you today. This is a multimeter. This is something every ham needs to have, and I'll talk about what it does. This right here is what's called a bench power supply. This is from Panovo, and the PS305 means three digits, and it'll go up to five amps, and it'll go up to 30 volts. And we'll marry these two together. This right here is an oscilloscope that shows what a waveform looks like, whereas this just measures the amount, like volts RMS, this will tell you all kinds of things about it, peak-to-peak -peak RMS and uh, averages and things like that, that uh, is an extension of the kind of thing you look at here. And this right over here is a signal generator, sometimes called a function generator or arbitrary function generator. And we'll talk about that. Let's come back over here to the volt ohm meter. This is called a multimeter these days. Back in ancient times when I was a young ham, these were called um, VOMs for volts, ohms, and milliamps. Well, this will do more than that. Uh, let's just try, if the battery isn't completely dead, taking a look at checking the resistance of a resistor here. Okay, we take a look at this. And if I hold these appropriately, we're going to find 9.29 kilo ohms. That's the combination of those two resistors. If I take just one, that's 4.7 kilo ohms. Okay, so now in terms of volts, what we can do is hook this to the Oops. to the power supply. Now this is an auto-ranging power supply. You can do AC or DC. If you're doing AC, it'll give you the RMS voltage, and you want one that gives you true RMS. Uh, if you're doing DC, it'll give you the right DC. Now, there's a very slight difference between these two. 10.38 here, 10.4 there. Now, the voltage goes all the way up and see there now one thing I want to point out to you if you get this is when you make a change like let's say you're going to 13.8 um, don't don't overshoot because this thing will overshoot and you can get the voltage you want now you know some of the circuits I've showed you need just 5 volts you can crank this down to 5 volts and get just what you need. Now, something else about this is this puts out voltage. That's what you would think a power supply does. But this one also can control the current. I'm going to switch this over to the 10 amp circuit. Okay, and now we're measuring current. This is in amps right here. Um, and you can get exactly the amount of current that you want uh, if you're testing something that needs current. Mostly in ham radio, you don't use this. But this thing will go up to 5.29 amps. Well, if you add the vernier in there, it'll go up just a little bit more. So you see you've got your coarse uh, on here and your fine uh, on here. And if it's an amp, if it's current limited, then this light comes on if it's voltage limited, which is most of the time this light comes on over here. It's a very cool little power supply. Um, uh, this right here 
is a little switch and you put it here either to 110 volts or 220 okay for wherever you are in the world and this is a a computer type plug that goes in here which seems to be universal these days on everything okay so this is called a lab power supply something you could keep on your workbench I've been a ham almost 40 years without having one but the VOM or the multimeter is indispensable it's something that every ham should have now if we look at the equipment that I've got down here this one is called a signal generator or arbitrary function generator. Uh, signal generators usually just output sine waves, but you can specify the frequency, the voltage, and the relative phase. There's two channels here, so you can put them in relative phase to each other. And we've got sine wave, square, ramp, um, and we got the frequency up too high, okay. And the pulse, general just noise if you want to check out a filter circuit. And then it has a whole bunch of arbitrary waveforms that are in here that you can use. Um, and let's see, we'll go to the arbitrary waveforms here. We'll select a waveform. Um, and look at the built-in ones. There's some cardiac ones. If you're designing equipment that has to deal with these things, it'll give you these waveforms. Um, it says engine, but these are pulses that you'll find in odd situations, okay? And you can uh, select one of these, and that's what you'll get. This is the sync function. Now, this piece of equipment that I'm going to show you next is called an oscilloscope. And this piece of equipment will show you what a waveform actually looks like and we'll do all kinds of measurements uh, for this one right here let's just uh, let's see horizontal is here this is the sync function uh, that they have it was the arbitrary function generator let me just press sign there you get a nice sine wave and this has four channels in it so you can look at four different waveforms and look at their relative phase relative amplitudes and so on. It gives you a multitude of information about it. The RMS value, the root mean square, voltage peak to peak, and maxes and minimums for the different sweeps and so on. Down here this will tell you that each vertical vertical division is 50 millivolts. Each horizontal division is 2 microseconds. Okay and then there's just a million different kinds of measurements that you can make on that. You've got controls over the the vertical and change the vertical height over the horizontal change the horizontal. The triggering sets when the scope triggers you can capture single waveforms all different kinds of things and on this particular scope if you have down here um, like a 4 gigahertz memory key you can put that in right there and then when you press the print button it will copy a picture very nice picture of the screen to the memory key so you can save that uh, for later I've done a lot of that with the S day videos okay so the test equipment that we have looked at today has started with the multimeter I recommend everyone get one uh, I'll put a link for all of these up on the text right underneath the video. If you use those links, then um, you get the ordinary price, the normal price, but I get a little bit of a finder's fee. So it's a great way to support um, Ham Radio Answers. Uh, like I said, everybody ought to have one. You can get these for $30 to $50. Of course, you can pay a lot more if you want. But that'll get you something real nice that'll last you for the entire time you're a ham. Batteries won't, though. You have to replace the batteries. Uh, this right here is about $70. Okay, like I said, this is the only one of the items here that uh, they gave me, gave me to review, and they didn't give me all of it. I had to pay for about 10%. Uh, the Regal Scope DS1054 Zulu. 
is an extremely popular scope right now. It's actually their low-end scope, but their high-end scopes get into laboratory grade, well, this is laboratory grade already, um, get into some very expensive things. Uh, I'll put a price on this um, in the film, and then this one right here was a lot less than I thought it would be. This is a Regal DG Dog Golf 1022 Zulu. Make sure you get the Zulu model because it has a better screen on it than the DG 1022 without uh, the Zulu. Very nice pieces of equipment and I like them not only for troubleshooting but because that way I can uh, show how things work on Ask Dave. So there you have it. Thanks very much for watching. If you would please click like subscribe, click on the bell, all of those things like that. Please also look at my support page, decastlercom slash support, uh, so that you could uh, join Patreon, be a, a patron uh, every month, uh, or just a tip jar for a one-time kick in the tip jar, and lots of other things there on the website. It's been great to talk with you today. Don't forget, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Mountain, which is noon Eastern, 9 a.m. on the Pacific Coast in the United States, we're going to have sort of a ongoing code sessions, Morse code. So until we next meet, 73.